Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the podcast. Today, I was given the wonderful opportunity to be able to catch up with Tim Scrace. Now, Tim and I, uh, I was given the wonderful opportunity, and I'm very, very grateful to be given the opportunity to be able to showcase a uh, lovely art installation in Salisbury High Street a couple of, uh, probably about a month ago now. And uh, this gave me a wonderful opportunity to be able to sort of talk to him a little bit about that project, but also get to know him, his business, and kind of his, his morals and his kind of values use as well as a company uh in the podcast as well so thank you so much for coming back if you did enjoy uh i would love to hear what you think in the comment section down below and if you would like to see any more from tim or myself then uh make sure to be subscribed to the channel and tim's links will be in the description down below those who are interested and i'm now going to hand over to tim to explain briefly what he does and uh move right into the interview so i'll see you very very soon i'm tim scrace from scrace architects we're architects and designers and artists based in Salisbury. Um, we um, have been in practice now for a couple of years. Um, and the aim of the practice was when it was set up to um, bring art back into architecture, to bring a bit of creativity to um, your, your average job. So uh, in each of our projects, we try and deliver something special and the way that we do that is by using creative and um, technological means to, um, like I say, sort of challenge the norm and to um, paint and see space differently. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tim, for coming on. I really appreciate it. And welcome to the podcast. Um, I think, you know, for me, it's it was interesting. And we've just come off the bat to give the viewers some context who may, who may not know, but we've just come off the the back of a uh, quite significant project i would say for you would you would you agree it's quite significant yeah no i i think is is it is um quite in 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 terms of a statement piece it's not one that you can miss yeah so so would you like to do the almighty job of revealing what this what this all quote unquote project is for for viewers who may not know yeah, so um, it, the project and the sculpture is this two will pass and it was a sculpture that was um, commissioned as part of the celebration of 800 years of the relocation of Salisbury Cathedral and I won a competition to um, design and install um, a piece of art on, the, on, on Salisbury High Street. Yeah, absolutely, and it is a it is a very thought appealing uh, art exhibition from my own personal opinion, and I think we'll get into some of the you know other ways of how we found it. But to give the viewers context, we were lucky enough to be chosen and given the opportunity to help Tim showcase that that installation um, as a whole. I mean, how did you feel that that process was from your side, Tim, about you know creating that piece to showcase this you know kind of amalgamation or this this one-time event the way i'm seeing it anyway is this kind of one-time event for you you know how did you how did you find working with myself and the, and the team as well in in actually helping that process happen I, th I think the tricky thing was um just trying to collect together all of those thoughts probably 15 to 16 months worth of development and and ideas and capture it in the one moment when it was installed and um, what I enjoyed about working with you was um, being able to kind of stand back from that that time scale and to look at the piece and it's as 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 a you know a piece of film that uh, could perhaps communicate some of those ideas and philosophies yeah absolutely. Yeah. I mean I think I think for me it was definitely a challenge and that's why I was really grateful that to get the project because it was one of those ones that was like at the start I think I told you in our first meeting I was like well I'll be honest I don't know how this is going to come out <laughs> you know I don't I don't I don't know how it's going to be showcased first because there was a lot of kind of uh, you know with covid there were some complications but also just you know doing something with that many logistics it has its own problems in the first place, right? Like, you know, I mean, do you think personally, have you, did you find that the installation itself went to plan? I, th I think it would have gone to plan if it was 12 months ago, I think. Um, but in some ways that was the beauty of it because it kind of, um, it, it took a lot, lot more energy and a lot more time from a lot more people. 
um, but ultimately it came at the right time for everyone else. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, in in some ways, the, the 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 way that I think probably tripped you up a little bit was this kind of idea almost of um, it being a creative the, the the film almost being a creative piece and talking that that language in a way rather than um, it necessarily being um, a showcase. And I think that we sort of we sometimes see art and we see an install and we see something arrive um, and that's an event and we're quite we're quite keen to have events but this is this is bigger than that and I think it's bigger than all of us and um, certainly I've been humbled over the last few weeks with um, the interactions more than anything else yeah exactly i mean I, I completely agree and i think it was as i say it was a it was a massive challenge um and that's why i uh, you know what was lucky enough to be able to have the support of a, a handful of other people as well uh, on this kind of production as well but also to you know allow the project i think to grow as we started creating it as well i think was one of the main things but you know i was going to ask you about you know how was because on the first you know couple of weekends and and i think up to the date as well at the time of filming you're still kind of going out and talking to members of the public about it and you're having that kind of interaction you know i mean how is that process i mean have you done something like that before firstly and then secondly if you haven't how was that experience for you I suppose I've done similar things before, and the the way that I see it is is my experience as as being an architect is that um, uh, I've been able to kind of develop designs that people might not necessarily like or might not meet their expectations or completely completely blows them away because it's so amazing. Um, but uh, in terms of sort of the interpretation of the piece, I think. That I can, I, that I've learned to understand is not in my hands and is in the hands of the beholder. <laughs> so um, it it is very much now. Um, what what I like about the piece at the moment is that it's still growing as a piece because more and more people are adding their memories to it, and they're not anything I you know I can control <laughs> or shape. <laughs> they're just you know, <laughs> they, it's, it's just what's happening. Um, and that's 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 the most enjoyable part, I think, of of the process so far. I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. I completely agree, and I think it's like giving up that kind of, in some ways, that level of control. But also, I mean, have you? I guess in some ways you had a a preconceived want for it, right? Like you wanted the art installation to be perceived a specific way because of course you did, right? Like that's that's what everyone wants when they create anything, right? I hope it's liked. I hope it's enjoyed. I hope it's this. Have you? I mean, did you? Firstly, did you? Like I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to say that you did when you didn't. Maybe, but you know, firstly, did you? And then secondly, was the the kind of response what you expected it to be? So did did I in what sense? Sorry. As in, did you have like in some ways a a preconceived? Oh, I think it's going to be liked by this demographic of person, or I think it's really going to be good for the city, or that you know those kind of things. Did you have those kind of thoughts when you started concepting it? Yeah, well, I think probably I had that. I had a preconceived idea of what I wanted to do, um, and so what I wanted the piece to do was actually to. Um, give people the opportunity to have their say um, i feel like you know the the cities uh partic and 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 sort of governance and aren't particularly good at giving platforms for people to to just voice you know how they're feeling um it's, it's almost like we're sort of shamed into to speaking up freely um and so by giving someone a piece of chalk and saying you can write what you want on that wall um it, it is I, th I think it was that 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 liberation that that everyone was almost looking for but i suppose yeah. what i was looking at, i suppose creatively what i was initially looking for that piece to do was to do more it, it was more geared to what my um feeling was which was that we need to kind of create and shape and um, give people design um ideas and shape the city in that way but What's interesting is that actually the switch is that everybody has their own different view of what the city and what they want to say. So 
you know, everyone's tapping in at a different point in their time, timelines in their life. And they're just saying what they think is the most important thing. And it might not necessarily be about the city, but in a way is, in, is, is shaping the city because people are expressing themselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. And I think, you know, I think the main thing for me was it it really, you know, strike that chord uh, and giving people that opportunity to to speak out, especially after, you know, and this kind of links in nicely to my follow on question, but it was, you know, it, it really linked nicely into giving that community feel back, giving people opportunity to be able to connect, but safely through through the times that we've been going through with covid and etc i mean do you think that kind of the i guess the question there would be you know do you think that if you had done it when it was meant to have happened it would have had a different meaning or it would have been you know received differently but because of covid it was specifically you know the lockdowns and the delays that, that it was caused by uh you know it had those kind of it changed a little bit in the respect of the piece I think it had, yeah, it, it obviously had an impact and it um, has shaped things in, in, in one way or another. Um, the, the, the thing is, is that we, we sort of suffered a little bit um, with Novichok in Salisbury anyway. So uh, I think there was always going to be a point where um, there was a sort of, um, there was, there I, th I think as a as a as a town and as a city, we'd kind of um, become to begun to realise that we needed to shape up and that we needed to do something different. And um, so there was a sense of resurgence within the city anyway. So the piece that I produced, I think initially as a concept, was off the back of that. And so mm -hmm. that strangely tied in with that same ambition. Um, that we all have now after um, these series of lockdowns, but it's a different kind of, it's a different place. It's more of a global response as opposed to uh, a local response. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, absolutely, I completely agree. And I think it's, you know, I think for me anyway, uh, I don't know whether you found this, but for me it was kind of, especially when the lockdowns were initially happening, especially in Salisbury specifically, there was a definite sense of community and a definite sense of, you know, we've got to support the people in the city and the businesses in Salisbury and we've got to support Salisbury because, you know, we've been through Novichok, we can get through it, blah, 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 that, that kind of feeling, you know, I mean, have you, did you find that, you know, as, as it kind of, you know, that people could use the installation as a way to, to do that? Well, yeah, I, it is sort of, it, the, the, the way that the piece is set is so that you reflect on your past and you build up towards, your future. So um, often, when I'm on the on the strip, as I've learned to call it, <laughs> uh, is that um, you you sort of get you get people who are in a different position in their lives. So you know, and depending on the day, you know, you might need a coffee um, one day, and so you're stuck in the past until you've had your coffee. And so it's very much of the moment, and so people can tap into it as and where mm -hmm. they choose you know where their mind is and in doing that that enables people to kind of get to the last board it's almost like a challenge so um i i think if um we can we can sort of capture that and capture that kind of idea of moving forward um we we've kind of got some some of the answers that we need yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. And I think it's one of those things that not a lot of people necessarily appreciate or necessarily do to, to you know, really reflect on the decisions they've made in the past, whether they're good or bad. Right. And I think it's one of those things where you can look at the past and you can't change it. Of course you can't, but you can you can learn from those decisions. Right. You can learn from what you've done. And, you know, I think, have you sort of, you know, I mean, how is it? Because I know a lot of your work was, you know, architectural in regards to, you know, we're building a house or we're building this and we're building that, you know, we're building office complex or whatever, you know. Did you did you see the art installation as a, as a chance for you to use your skill set in a different way? Yeah, um, yeah it's a massive opportunity. Um, but it's an opportunity that I think that's been building for a while. So I feel um, in, in my practice as a whole, my practice is sort of 
in 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 being my own boss as a as an architect um i've found confidence in um myself as a painter and um in finding confidence as a painter i've realized that i could perhaps become a sculptor and so and because i recognize there these things are interchangeable and it's okay for them to be interchangeable um that's made it a lot easier to kind of move forward with um, with the practice as a whole, because the you know the umbrella of that is that creativity. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think for those who, because I think there's a lot of misconceptions around the architectural practice as a whole. I mean, for layman's terms, what is it that you actually do as a, as an as as an architect or as a you know in that respect? What what is it that you actually are in charge of doing? Right? What what is it that a client would hire you to do? Um, I think I think probably that in the first instant we we kind of capture dreams, and then with those dreams we sort of distill them into plans, and uh, in layman's terms, you can you can sort of skip skip the stage of dreaming and just have plans done, but then you won't get the product or or whatever that you you actually want. Um, in terms of that product, if we've got the dreams and we've got them captured, um, I would say that we probably go through quite a heavy distillation process and um, the more involved and developed those ideas can become and the more they can be shaped in paper and in detail, the more likely you are to end up with a product of quality. And so, and 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 a bespoke product. So we, as um, I suppose, almost craftsmen. Some of us build. Some of us do do our own thing these days. Um, we are a jack of all trades, um, but actually, sort of have that creativity and that ingenuity at, at the heart. So we also know. We hope generally. Uh, have an idea of how those things go together so I suppose it's a little bit like it's like getting the best Lego set that you could ever want um, but yeah um, having having someone um, project manage it for you and build it for you um, yeah. and then ask you to play with it <laughs> yeah so I think it's one of those things where I think, you know, a lot of, in a very similar way, you're part of helping your client's vision come into reality, right? You you take their dream, in your case, or, you know, their idea or their concept, and you, you help the, the, the laws of reality, you help mould those into into the product, into the final final piece, whether that's an art installation or house or an office building or whatever it may be. Um, you know, in that respect, and you... you to the close of your effect in a similar way to what i do you help showcase someone's vision in a way that they may not necessarily be able to do because they may not necessarily have the technical understanding how to do it or the equipment or the time or the resources or etc to be able to you know showcase that or be able to provide a that perspective right and, and be able to uh, to also create what's what's needed for someone to feel that emotional connection to their house their office their the art installation whatever you know whatever the project may be right i imagine you 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 now have the ability and, and will have the ability moving forward to to take on those other projects and be able to give your creative vision to those um in that respect as well i mean the i think the initial question comes I mean, how do you kind of get? Was it? Would you always want to be an architect? Was it something that you always wanted to to do, or was it something that you sort of then grew into doing? I mean, like, how does one start as an architect? Um, it's something that has been on, you know, was was on my radar from the age of ten, I think. So I think I probably wanted to be an architect, and um, the reason for that was that I wanted to create my own home. So my own space, um, my mentor was my mum's mom's best, best friend's husband. So in effect was um, like an uncle to me. Um, but what he didn't tell me was that he'd inherited large chunk, chunk of land. Um, so, you know, he was able to build a house on it and we used to go and visit and he was an architect and he designed his own house. So 
um, I thought that was rather cool and thought that I could do the same, but I didn't necessarily at the time have the capital behind me. So um, it's, a, it's a slightly different, different game when you don't have the money, but it certainly sort of set the, set the tone. Um, having moved around a lot as a kid, I was always quite keen to kind of um, build a new home. I think I've said that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. To build it, to build your dream, and to build the, the what your vision of a quote unquote perfect home would be, you know, um, in that respect as well. I mean, I think you know for for those people who, because I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's some building processes where an architect isn't necessarily involved. Um, you know, building building a house, perhaps there is, perhaps there isn't. I I'm I'm uneducated on this topic, so I'm happy to be educated. But you know, I think is there. I mean, let me ask you: is there is there specific build processes where an architect may not necessarily be involved? And and if there is, what would you say to people who, you know, don't necessarily want the input or don't have the money or don't want to spend the money on bringing in an architect? Um, well, I, I, I think it's about a value judgment, isn't it? Um, so uh, I was thinking just as in response to one of the questions earlier was that I said about um, sort of bottling dreams, but actually some people don't necessarily have those dreams or don't feel like they have those dreams. And, um, but actually in talking to people and having someone listen to what your ideas and ambitions are and you as a person um, can enable those dreams. And so, you know, that's, 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 where, that's where we come in as architects is sort of, you know, almost sort of extracting those things from you. Uh, we don't use any, um, nasty tools um, but it's sort of that kind of you know we're there to ha- we're there to help really um, I th- I, the the build process can be done in lots of different ways especially these days you know historically there was only one one path but and and probably if I'd have been qualified 30 years ago um, I might have been flying a helicopter by now but um, it, there are, the the profession has broken down it means that um, design is more accessible to all. Um, there's a lot more opportunity for um, better homes as a result and better better office space or, or what have you. But the the specialists in the field are are architects and you know and as as there are interior designers. So you know I would bow to some an interior designer. Um, in terms of the, the the makeup of the space internally, you know, we we can turn our hands to all of these things, but like with any any kind of subject, there are specialists. Um, if I can I can size the size of steel, um, but I will get it vetted and checked and ask the engineer to produce the calculations. And when it's too big, I'll tell him it's too small. It needs to be smaller. But you know, is is one of those um, is is one of those processes that is so complicated as a process that if you haven't got experience then you need someone to guide you and yeah. probably the people that are best positioned to do that are architects um in terms of economy the economy is that you spend um your money up front to to avoid being stung at stung at the end um you know if you if you're putting it, it depends on the project but say you know you're putting a large a large portion into the drawings then um the chances are you're going to be less likely to get stung at the end and um we all know i think having seen enough enough grand designs and and other other programs to know that the, the costs at the other end sort of dwarf the initial yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's about it's about a value judgment really like i say yeah, I completely agree. And I think it's like, you know, I, I see a lot of parallels in, you know, when I was listening to your answer, you know, I see a lot of parallels in what, what we do as well, because they're both great processes. You know, one is building a house, the other is building a video. But, you know, I think, and it's the analogy I use all the time, which is, you know, if you're going to build your house, make sure it's on good foundations in the same way. If you're going to produce a video, make sure it's on good foundations and good planning, because if you put time, energy, money, etc., into the planning stages and into the pre-production stages of a video, then you have a lot better of an understanding, a lot better of an idea of what your, the outcome's going to be, what the product's going to be, where the holes might be, where the problems might be, you know, 
obviously you have projects where there's sometimes slight concerns and slight issues and the, and the projects do evolve like everything but at a core as long as you have a good plan it's more likely that 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 video that product that house etc is going to be able to fulfill what it is for that for that client you know for fulfill that job that it is there to do i mean i think you know the initial question would be what are your wants for the company you know obviously there's the there's the generic answer there is make enough to live on etc 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 but i mean do you have any like I want to grow the company. I want to be able to work on this specific project or be able to do this specific thing. Um, I don't have any specific targets. Um, the the company as a whole is um, something I see as a bit more of a collective and as a studio um, that I'm hoping will um, be able to kind of consult on creative um on, on most most creative things so um be that a sculpture be that a workshop be that a um an, an install of um an, an arcade within a within a within a, within an existing building um mm -hmm. in general terms i i think that like like your sort of your point about sort of having that that structure and almost that that purpose to something is some is is where I think the focus is for me for the company. So, you know, in some, in the same way that you need to have a purpose for your your you know your project, you need to have a purpose for your company. So the purpose for me really is um, to sort of improve is as it has always been. I think is is always to kind of improve environment. So um, whether that's through um, reminding people of the 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 impermanence of uh, our our vulnerable environment through um through a podcast or through a painting or through a, fo a photograph um or in just kind of um you know like, like like we have done recently with with the sculptures just sort of highlighting elements to people so that they're it's, it's almost sort of an educational element to, to what we do. Um, it's, it's almost we want to continue to evolve the practice in a way that um, is educating um, our clients and um, probably, probably, you know, in a broader sense, um, the, the community in thinking about um, environments and how we can see and shape space that little bit uh, with a little bit more purpose. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I completely agree. And I think it's, you know, about one of those things where we kind of, in some ways, answer to our own actions, right? Like if we if we don't act, sometimes that's the biggest example of 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 showing what we our opinion is on a topic or etc. You know, in the, in that respect. So, I think it's important to firstly appreciate yourself, why you do things, and why you do what you do, but also as well to understand that you have some level of influence right we talk a lot on social media about quote unquote influencers and we talk about people who have influence but everyone has influence right every customer every client every person who provides a service has a level of influence because we're going to push the needle in the direction which which we feel is best for that person that client that customer you know in that in that respect that's part of our our benefit that's part of what our job is or our role is you know and i think i think it's one of those things when you understand that it allows you to do your job better and i think it's important to appreciate that and if you don't necessarily know that now to reflect on that and what on what your reasons are and 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 you know understanding your own values as well i mean have you found that you have been able to grow the company in such a way that kind of is attached to your own your own values as well like your the decisions you make or have you found that you know that's not necessarily true um, i've i've uh, yeah i think i've had um i think i've had the opportunity particularly with covid and the break and the need to diversify to be able to bring some of the core values that um i'd set out upon um, back in check and um, it does 
influence how um, we make decisions within the company. Um, how uh, rather than talking about I, we're talking about we, and how um, we are going forward with um, offering opportunities to to, to young people. Um, how we are interacting with the community, how we are using our creative skills to communicate better with clients. And so, yeah, I, I would say it's sort of heavily entrenched in what we're doing. So the hope is, is that that will, you know, in, in sticking to our, our roots and our core, that we'll be able to kind of um, build from that, really. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think it's about, you know, what we're talking about here is meaningful change in your own communities, right? I think, you know, and by no means does that mean we're pushing necessarily in one direction or the other, but what it does allow us to do is to understand the influence that we may have on that community and the changes that we would like to see in our own communities as well. And I think, you know, it's it when you understand that, it allows you to have a certain level of responsibility to your own decisions, especially as a director of a company or a leader of a company, etc. as well, because you have a knock-on effect to your team, to your clients, to your customers, to the people around you, and also the peers and the other people in your industry, because the reality of the fact is that wherever you are in the industry, there will always be people who will look up to you where you are and see where you are as somewhere where you want to, where they want to go as well. You know, so I think it's important to uh, have the responsibility to, to understand that, but also to be able to change and adapt and change your perspective on your own values as the company grows and as you go as a company and as and as and as a person and as a director. You know, I think for me that's the main important thing. And I think if anyone's gonna take anything from this podcast, they that's that's what they should take from it. Um but you know that's kind of everything I wanted to kind of cover today mostly. I mean I like to add on the end of the podcast a little bit that to give you an opportunity Tim to be able to ask me a couple of questions or be able to throw in a topic for us to discuss for a couple of minutes if you have any so you know do you do you have anything you want to ask me or any any questions or any thoughts that you have no um I I suppose the you know the, the just thinking about it really in terms of in terms of working together was um thinking about how you you set out to kind of um, yeah, I mean, how you set out to kind of grab those dreams that we were talking about earlier. So when it came to came to the, the practice that um, I was looking to portray and the and the sculpture that um, you did a great job in in filming and and um, I suppose sort of realizing and representing in in your film. Um, what was it? What was it that kind of? What? Well, how would you describe in in one or two sentences what you were trying? What you were trying to do and what you learned in that process? I mean, just before I answer the like one or two specific things that are you know important in that, I think the main things are for me. Whenever I take on a project, I always try to see how challenging it is and understand and be okay with that at the start because and as i said a little bit earlier i think this project was a challenge and it was definitely a challenge in the respect to how we went about doing it and why we went about doing it but for me the main thing i want people to take from that film is to show the journey and to help you showcase what it actually was that you wanted people to how you wanted people to interact with the film but also how you wanted people to interact with the sculpture itself and for them to get a taste and understanding of the work that actually went into you know putting something like that on the high street you know actually doing that in the respect to you know because behind closed doors that i know because i saw some of the behind the scenes call stuff there was a lot of work that went into it and there's a lot of work that will go into something like that. And I think it was for me about trying to help showcase the work, but also the different, the amount of people, but also the different walks of people that came and the walks of life that people really came to, you know, they came together to be able to to, to do this project, to showcase this this product and this this art installation as as something that the city can be proud of and that's not necessarily because everyone loved it because not everyone did to be honest and you know but i don't think that's necessarily a problem 
because I think that's part of the point. I, my understanding was the whole point is to make people think. It's not necessarily for them to go, oh, Tim, this is amazing, right? Yeah, well, I, I like those people. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, I mean, they're, they're, there are one or two who um, find find it a little tricky to um, understand. But in some ways, what you helped with was offering that narrative to how to appreciate the piece. And mm -hmm. that's something that we're still trying to work with when we're not there. So you know, offering that level of interaction through a podcast or um, that story and that journey um, so that it's reminding people about, you know, what, what what is this this object that's landed to slow me down in my path? It's not, um, it, it is to slow you down on in your path, but it's to slow you down in the, your path so that you recognise that you're on an important path and that you might want to reflect on that because you might be, um, on a path of pilgrimage that has been there for 800 years. Um, but to distill that down into, and to distill 800 years down into 18 meters takes some doing, I think. Um, and that's where the collaboration of the team has really sort of helped. Um, and certainly sort of working with the likes of you and, uh, and, and James and in, in sort of the curation and the communication of the piece um that was you know that was that was sort of really sort of invaluable in 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 the whole you know that sort of is the sum of the parts isn't it yeah yeah absolutely. and i think that's what one of the things that most people don't necessarily appreciate that because you know there's sometimes a misconception especially when we talk about video or we do video or or etc it's okay we're going to show up with a camera we're going to put it in your face we're going to get you to talk to it okay job cool job done but what the actually is the reality of that and how i do it at least i can't speak for anyone else but how i do it is there's a lot of thought there's a lot of time there's a lot of energy goes into okay well where are we filming why are we filming what are we doing how are we showcasing it what are we doing what are we trying to emulate here? What are we trying to talk about? What do we want to try and, you know, showcase, you know, and that's not to manipulate the truth, but that will be the passive reality of what's happening because whenever we go, if anything goes through an editing process of any form, you do change it, you do tweak it. You have to, you know, to go one one step to the left, you have to move away from the conversation on the right, right? You have to, you have to do that. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but it's something that I always say to people whenever they see anything, take it with a pinch of salt, no matter how well or good it is, because you need to appreciate, you need to understand that sometimes or whenever anything is quote unquote edited, there is, there is a level of, um, you know, control and a, a level of decision making that happens for that reason. But also it's to showcase what, what was meant from the from from the piece in this case like you know why why is it there you know why why is there a boulder in the high street tim you know why 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 is this inconvenient thing in in the way right what is it what is it there for me to think about and i think you know if people stopped and and, and took a moment to think and reflect i think it's valuable for that reason and that reason alone um if they get nothing more out of it just to reflect on what why you're doing what you're doing in your life because our lives are very busy and our lives are in a, you know, normally in a position where we're, we're so bombarded by either what others need us to do or what our environment needs us to do or what we want to do that we don't always stop and reflect, you know, and I think that's, I think that's what really, really, for me anyway, that's what, you know, that the piece allows you, allows one to do. Yeah, it, it almost sort of gives that, gives permission for you to stand still. And and actually, I mean, that was one of the con the initial conception was this idea of um, don't stand still, but in provoking you to to not stand still and look forward, it was also making you think about standing still and writing something on the board. So um, that that sort of I think I think that probably hits hits the tone of the piece. And um, weirdly, um, the the strange thing about this as a project is that the and and what I, I've I've witnessed, I think, is um, how actually, you know, that, that lack of con control of a piece is actually one of the most creative things that you can do. So mm -hmm. is just letting other people take control and, and shape it in their own way. Um, it's, it's almost the, the curation of that space that and and of the movement of that of that space 
that has that has has got people thinking because you you know as we've talked about is that the movement of the piece was was one of the key elements but it's not until you say to 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 the passerby look don't worry about the sculpture just ignore that um it's about you um you i don't think you appreciate necessarily um what it's all about I completely agree. Um, for those who would be interested in possibly seeing the film if they haven't, or you know, seeing some more of your work perhaps, or just just connecting with you in general, where where is best for people to do that? Um, well, as an architect, I um, we 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 use GraceArchitects.co.uk. Um, that's the best. That's the best best route there. And um, in terms of my artistic work, that is available at TimsGrace.com. Um, although. You know, on a on a an Instagram level, that's probably that's probably a good option too. So um, you can find me with various tags there. Absolutely, and I will on the YouTube version link all of uh, the above uh, information for Tim as well. So those who are interested, feel free to check the description, and you will find uh, the relevant links down there as well. So thank you so much, Tim, for joining me. Um, any final thoughts or anything that you would like to mention before we wrap up this episode? No, not really. I think uh, I think you've um, it's it's just been nice to chat. So um, good good to talk over kind of some of some of your ideas and see those similarities. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's really important. And that's why I like to have the podcast as a reflection on, especially when we do larger projects like like yours, where, you know, I, I can really get to to understand. OK, well, firstly, did we did we hit the goal? Right. Firstly. Right. Main thing. Did we hit the goal? If we didn't. OK, let's talk about why. Why didn't we? Right. What, what, what was the issues? What can I do better? What can what can myself or the team or, or et cetera do better to to, uh, you know, serve serve you better? And I think in a lot of what you do as well, you you will go about the same process as well, because the reality in the service trade is we're nothing without our clients because our clients are legitimately the ones who pay our bills and the ones who allow us to do and live the lifestyles that we have because we are uh, we are able to facilitate the services which we offer of course but the they still would you know they they still have a valid very 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 valuable part in that so you know i, I really appreciate you taking the time and, and you know giving me that feedback and giving me that opportunity to be able to uh, explore what 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 how the project was and how the project really did you know do as well so so yeah Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me once again. I hope you took value and understood and, uh, you know, enjoyed this interview uh, for myself and Tim. It was great to catch up with him and see kind of, you know, uh, the reason why I like to do them is because it gives me a real scenario and a real understanding of how I can get better at projects, but also how I can get better at what I do as well and allow me to stay humble um, in that respect as well. And, yeah, just be able to showcase, you know, great people doing great work. So thank you so much to tim if you are listening back and uh, for joining me and if you are joining back and this is the first podcast you're listening to congratulations on getting to the end but thank you so much for joining me and i'll see you very very soon for some more content